Okay, guys, in this video segment, we're going to talk about uh, heats of solution. Okay, uh, in previous videos, we've talked about a, a molar heat of a reaction and how we can use the values of a chemical reaction to basically determine energy change with that using a delta H. Now, this is no different than before in terms of a heat of a reaction. The only difference here is that we're called heat of solution because we're not really performing a chemical reaction in this example. What we're doing is performing just a dissolving process. Okay, So when you dissolve something into water, acetone, gasoline, ethanol, it doesn't really matter what. If you dissolve something, when it goes into that solution form, you are starting to break apart those ions. Okay. So when you take an ionic compound and you dissolve it, it separates into its positive charges and its negative charges. When that happens, there is a chemical change there because you are unlinking or unhooking up that crystal lattice and those chemical bonds that are there. Okay. So anytime you mess with chemical bonds, we know that we have a change in energy. So we actually can track that change in energy the same way we would as we did a heat of reaction in our previous examples. Okay. So essentially, a heat of solution is nothing new to us. It's just the heat required to or release when when something dissolves. Okay, so think about to like hot packs. Okay, you know it's winter time, um, it's cold out. You crack open one of those hot packs and squish it around, and you get they get hot just magically. And what actually is happening there is it's not actually getting hot. What you're doing is you're taking um, something like calcium chloride, and you are combining it with water. Okay, and putting it into solution. When you do that, okay, those hot packs that you use that are liquidy, okay, not the ones you buy at the store that are disposable, but more those liquidy ones. Um, what happens is, is the calcium dissolves and the chlorine dissolves, and when it does from the calcium chloride, it releases 81.74 kilojoules of energy every time you, do, you dissolve a mole's worth of this stuff. Okay, so just like a chemical reaction, by dissolving this, going from its solid state into its aqueous state we get an energy change, okay? Um, another way you can do a cold pack, okay, we talked about one already um, when barium hydroxide reacts with ammonium nitrate, but actually if you just take ammonium nitrate by itself and you dissolve that into water, okay, just plain old ammonium nitrate and dissolve it into water, that process actually is endothermic. So it actually attracts energy um, in that process. So that's gonna absorb 25.7 kilojoules per mole of this to make the ammonium ion in solution aqueous here and the nitrate ion in solution, okay? So both of these things are basically the exact same as before, but now we're just talking about solutions, okay? Now, some other things that you may have heard of in terms of hot packs, cold packs, those kind of things. Uh, hand warmers, okay? Those hand warmers that are solid that kind of feel like you have a powder inside of them, uh, those disposal ones, those are actually a chemical reaction of the oxidation of iron, okay? Um, Self-heating meals, um, are the exact same thing as those uh, hand warmers, except for they oxidize magnesium, okay, or sometimes aluminum. In either case, you're basically just doing a chemical reaction that has a pretty big exothermic process to it, and as a result, that exothermic process warms everything up and heats up your hands or heats up the meal and those kind of things, okay? So that's kind of how hot packs and cold packs kind of work, all right? So what we're going to do is a quick little example. Um, we're going to use our, our reaction up here where the calcium chloride reacts in calcium ions and chlorine ions. And let's just talk about, you know, what would our energy change be and just kind of remind ourselves of that stoichiometry that's involved with it. So let's say um, we had 25 grams of our calcium chloride. And we wanted to dissolve that into water, okay? So if I had 25 grams of calcium chloride and I'm dissolving that into water, how would that how would that process work? And basically what we're going to solve for is, well, how much energy would be produced from that. So if we have 25 grams of calcium chloride, okay, we know that we need a ratio here, a mole ratio. So we know, need to know our grams of calcium chloride for every one mole of the calcium chloride. And then once we know that, we know in this process that for every one mole of the calcium chloride that we release, so it's got to be negative, 81 point 74 kilojoules of energy okay so in this process really the only un unknown thing there is our molar mass of calcium chloride so to do that we need to kind of figure out that molar mass so calcium ha is a, has a mass of 40.01 and chlorine is 35.45 but that's two so that's 70.90 so we got a one we got a nine we got a zero so we have 110.91 so that goes in here 
And if I'm going to react 25 grams of calcium chloride or dissolve, basically, 25 grams of calcium chloride, we can actually solve for how much energy that would make. So we plug that in, pull out the trusted calculator here, and we take our 25 grams divided by 110.91, take that times a negative 81.74, and we get a value of a negative 18.42, da da da. And I only use two sig figs here, so essentially I'm saying that this process is going to give me, you know, a releasing of 18 kilojoules of energy, okay? So that should be very familiar with chemical reactions um, and how that kind of works. Just like before, we can actually associate this heats of solution with temperature changes too. And if we know the temperature change, we can again solve for Q, and then we can solve for the delta H for solutions just like we do for chemical reactions, okay? So the take-home message here is we're not really learning anything new in terms of the math we've done previously. The only thing we're doing is applying that knowledge to a new scenario. We're not doing a chemical reaction, but instead we're doing dissolving something into water. Okay? So that's how it works. We will have some examples in class, and we will probably do a little activity with this also when we come back to class. Thanks, guys.